this is a place where I talk about what I've been making each month and I've got a few little bits of knitting to show you so I'm going to put my cup of tea down and I'll start by sharing what I'm wearing today so this is the Dove Cottage Sweater by Emma Wright and it's knit in the Fibre Co Law stand up so you can see it's got this really nice deep ribbing um, on the cuffs and the sort of hem and lovely kind of mock neck and this drop shoulder shape so it's a really really classic sweater i feel like i mentioned this recently that i was considering frogging this and using the yarn for something else and i don't know what i was thinking because the temperatures dropped and i've literally been living in this i've been wearing it non-stop so i'm so grateful that a few months ago when it was a little bit warmer and i couldn't really think about knitting and um, wearing something quite as warm as this that I did not frog it because yeah I've been wearing it non-stop I've been um, wearing it with my winterberry shawl actually you can see it here I've taken it off because um, as I, I don't know if I said this but the sun is really low and bright it's about um, I think it's about one in the afternoon and the sun is just so low it was a really really frosty very very misty start it was sort of completely misty outside the window I couldn't see anything until about 10 o'clock and then all of a sudden the sun's burnt through and yeah it's lovely so I had to take this off while I was getting ready because I was getting so hot but um yeah this has been a lifesaver while well, we've had a really cold snap here um so yeah i've been wearing this a lot and somebody actually sorry i've got fluff flying around um somebody actually mentioned i think i was talking about this on instagram maybe and i shared a link to the blog post where i talked about the modifications i've made and um i think it was alicia i'm sure it was you um was sort of saying what makes you do all these modifications instead of maybe choosing a pattern that's more like what you wanted um and i thought that was such a good question because i'm not someone that does do a lot of modifications to patterns really and i think this sort of um was a different kind of project for me and it just kind of um, evolved in that way so this is actually a seam sweater and I'd never seamed anything before so that was sort of why I chose this pattern and I'm going to talk about another um, pattern that I'm knitting actually which is of a similar vein where it's more almost like an education piece where obviously I want the finished item but I'm I'm choosing it because it's a skill I want to do or there's something I wanted to learn so I really wanted to do this and try um, seaming but this actually has on the bottom part, it's supposed to have a colourwork section. So I left the colourwork section out because it wasn't really my taste. I'd just rather have it plain. And I really like the idea of having a really deep ribbing. So I did the deep ribbing and left out the colourwork because I was really focusing more on the construction. So that's the change I made there. And then I also, another thing I did was I ended up picking up the sleeves and then knitting these down. And I feel like that was a choice that I didn't go into it making. It was as I was working through the sweater because it was the first time I was seaming anything, I was a bit worried about fit. So I decided to, once I'd done the body, I seamed the shoulders and the sides so that I could actually try it on and kind of get a feel for if it was the right length and all that kind of thing. And I realized that it would be really, really simple to just pick up the sleeves and knit them down. And then by knitting them down, I was able to hit the point that I wanted to. And yeah, it just made sense because that was actually something that I was um, more familiar with, with sweaters. I think most of the sweaters I've knit have always picked up the sleeves and knit them down to the cuffs. So yeah, I kind of made that decision on the fly. I think I'd learnt the seaming part, was really happy with that, so it made sense to change the sleeves because it just felt easier to knit them that way. And another modification I made was to the neck, and the only reason for that was that I knit it the way of the pattern, and I just felt like the fit wasn't so good when I tried it on for me, for my body. And yeah, so I made a few changes. I'll, I'll leave links in the show notes. If you're looking for show notes, um, they'll be just below this video. A link will take you over to the blog. I'll put all the patterns um, and any resources that I'm talking about today will all be there. I also, if you want to join 
in the show notes mailing list there's actually an email list that you can get on and anytime one of these videos goes live I send an email to all those people and I put the show notes right there in the email so before you've even watched the video you've um, seen what I'm going to talk about that day so you might be interested in that but in that blog post I do talk in more detail about what the changes were that I made to the deck line to get this sort of um, fit and yeah I think I'm really really pleased with the overall effect and as I say it was just a bit more of a learning experience so it wasn't something that I necessarily um, sort of picked the pattern and thought yes that's exactly the look that I want I just kind of evolved as I went through but I think if you've watched most of my videos you'll have seen lots of the different sweaters that I've knit over the years and I tend to just stick to the pattern I don't deviate too much so this was a little bit different for me so um, yeah hope you like it I think I will, what should I show you first? I've got so many different things. I think I'm going to um, talk to you about so this other project that I've been working on that is sort of a bit of a learning exercise is a vest. So in here I've got some Jacob yarn from West Yorkshire Spinners and this is a really lovely sheepy wool. It's so nice. Um, actually, yeah, I've got a skein here. Um, so this is one of the other skeins, so oh, I think it's actually called fleece, but it's a uh, Jacob yarn, it's an Aran weight and yeah as I said it's super super woolly, it smells very sheepy and I'm knitting a pattern called cutting edge vest, um, I'm not sure how you pronounce the designer's name, it looks like it's Elbiona McLaughlin but I have a feeling that's probably not how you pronounce it. I'm guessing that it's a name like Neve or Siobhan where you don't sound out <laughs> all the letters how you would say it. Um, so I will, of course, have in the show notes a link to her page. But basically, it's a steaked vest. And this is the swatch that I've done. I've actually steaked this, which I was very impressed with. And yeah, I picked this pattern because I have never steaked anything before. So let me quickly show you because I did... Let's have a look if I've got it on here. Uh, sorry, hold on. There we go. Yeah, it is called the cutting edge vest. And I'll give you, here's a little picture of what it looks like. If you can try and get it so it's not reflecting too much. But I think you get the idea. Um, so basically the sleeve holes and this front v-neck section are steaked. And yeah, it's a really... A really good um, sort of garment I think for practicing these techniques so I've never steeped anything before and I'm definitely doing this more as a um, sort of process knit rather than a product knit I would like to wear the vest when it's finished I wouldn't have picked something that I couldn't see myself wearing at all kind of imagining that I'll maybe wear it with like a thin sort of um, mock neck or roll neck top underneath it but basically I thought rather than doing a whole cardigan this is quite a slim fitting vest and it obviously doesn't have any sleeves you're actually steaking on the sleeves as well as the V so I feel like there's lots of opportunities to practice the technique and this is a brilliant yarn as well so you can see it's steaked beautifully the there's like no rolling what I did was um, there was a pearl in between here and she has you press your swatch with an iron, so really steamy, steamy iron. And so I pressed, I had it knit in the round, pressed that, and then I literally cut the pearl stitches and it cut beautifully. It was so easy, nothing's come unraveled. Um, it's a very small swatch. I was a little bit dubious about knitting a swatch so small. Usually I try and do quite a big swatch for getting gauge, but it did say in the pattern this was how many stitches to cast on. And I haven't quite got gauge, so I do need to do another swatch because the yarn for the size that I'm knitting, I think there's not a lot of leeway. So rather than, I don't really want to go into an extra skein, but I would like to get the gauge right so that I know that I've probably got sort of I'm going to use the right amount of yarn basically so yeah very very pleased with that you can see it's a lovely warm grey shade and yeah I think it's a lovely sticky it's very rustic um definitely is a more sort of crunchy rustic yarn that I think is perfect for steaking and yeah I think it will work really nice for this sort of vest so that's a project that I've got on the needles and actually I haven't shown you this have I this is in one of my top handle totes that I had in my winterberry kits so I've also got in here 
This is I this is a mystery skein of yarn that I'm sure is the Fiberco Aaron Moore Light. Didn't have a ball band, but I'm 99% sure that's what it is. And this is a Sophie scarf. So everybody seems to be knitting a Sophie scarf at the moment, and I am no exception. <laughs> so you're going to see one of these, and you can see this yarn is really nice. It's got it hasn't been blocked or anything, but it looks super crisp, doesn't it? It looks really nice on the edges. I love this. Um, it's sort of got an eye cord edge. It's very very simple. I'm probably taking me the longest out of anybody who's ever knit a Sophie scarf because everyone's just whipping them up super fast but um yeah I'm just knit knitting on this as and when I can I've had loads going on it's so busy at this time of year um to be honest I haven't had much time in the evenings to sit and knit but this is a really nice project when I do feel like it and actually I'm knitting it bigger than the pattern calls for so um, I'm actually weighing my yarn and when I get about halfway through then I'm going to start doing the decreases just to maximise the use of the skein so it is going to be longer and I think I've already gone past the point where I should have started the decreases if I was following the pattern perfectly. Um, I'll have to put in the show notes what needle size I think I'm using or oh, I shouldn't guess should I? I feel like it was like a five, but I could be totally wrong on that. <laughs> so don't trust what I'm saying now. Look at the show notes. So pop that away. And let's talk about something else. Next up, I've got a gorgeous pair of socks to show you. So these are the Homebody socks. And they are a pattern by Olivia of This Handmade Life. And they're my winter kits for this year. So I put together some kits with Olivia and you get a beautiful skein of Fiberco um, Amble, which is the yarn I've used to knit these. And I hope you can see just how squishy and delicious this yarn is. And Olivia actually uses, um, she holds a yarn with a strand of mohair to get that fuzzy texture that you get with mohair. And with the amble, I have just knit this with the amble no mohair and it's a really lovely plump fingering weight so i think it works perfectly for this pattern and i'm not sure how well it will show on camera but you do get this really nice fuzzy halo with this as well it has a percentage of alpaca it's um got easy wash alpaca and easy wash merino and recycled nylon in the blend so it is a washable yarn but it doesn't use the harmful treatments that you get with superwash fiberco worked to develop a eco-friendly treatment that made the yarn washable so pretty cool and yeah these socks are beautiful i'm so happy with how they turned out so with the kits you get the sock pattern and you get the yarn and i've also i've got choice of bags so one of the bags i've done which i absolutely love i'm so obsessed with this is the joy bag so these small sacks they will actually hold about three skeins of fingering weight yarn so it's quite a versatile bag you don't have to just use it for your socks but I love it and I felt like I tried to make the design not too Christmassy and festive but something that you could use all winter long so I think joy is a lovely sentiment and it's got this lovely wintry wreath with berries that also goes with the um, winter berry design that I had so the little sprigs that you see around the wreath are actually these berries as well so yeah, really, really pleased with how that came out. And there's a whole variety of different kits. So there's some where you get wool wash and you get EPN cozies and lavender sachets. Um, yeah, I've got some of those here actually. I've been getting my ready. So you've got some um, lovely wool wash bars and lavender sachets. And I've sort of put them in different combinations. So there's things for various budgets. You can just purchase the bag on its own. You could get just the bag and the pattern, which that actually helps if you're looking at shipping costs if you're international um, it's obviously going to be cheaper to send it without the yarn because I can send it on the um, large letter so um, but then there's right up to if you really want to treat yourself and you want to get a lovely drawstring bag with the wool wash and the lavender sachets and everything those are over there too so do go over and check out the kits because these socks are so beautiful there's lots of lovely details that make these really special so the last kit that I did um, it was a toe up sock and I often knit toe up but I know loads of you like knitting cuff down so this is a cuff down pattern um, so I tried to give something different and the last socks I did were lacy so I've gone for something that's a little bit more minimalist more classic this year and just so you've got a little bit of contrast in your sock wardrobe but as I say there's some things that make these really special so the 
what do you call it, the cuff, it actually uses a tubular cast on, which I know loads of people don't like doing the tubular cast on, and it can be a bit fiddly, but if you're ever going to do a tubular cast on, probably socks is the time when it's nice, because you don't have that many stitches to manage, and it goes quite quickly, so it's not too much of a chore, and it just does give a really nice detail, you get this lovely sort of thick, cushy um, cast on edge. The other thing is the stitches just flow so beautifully into the heel. They have really nice finish and also into the toe. So you don't have a knit section on the toe. It just goes right into the end if you're able to see. You just keep flowing those. So yeah, I think Olivia has paid a lot of attention to detail. There's no stitches to pick up on the heel. So if you're a beginner, it's a great pattern because um, yeah, as I say, you don't have to pick up any stitches. It's very, very intuitive to knit this heel. And oh, and the other amazing thing is if you're thinking, oh, I don't really want to knit a rib sock. I don't like doing lots of purling. You get a knit rest row every other row. I know it's like, it doesn't make sense how it works, how you get a rib pattern without having to knit and purl every row, but you don't have to. You're only purling every other row. So, yeah, I love these. I really, really hope you like the pattern. Um, and I'd love you to check out the kits because, as I say, I am so pleased with how this bag came out. It was like a little idea that I had. I could kind of visualise this wreath and I was trying so many different designs. I put something on Instagram because I got to the point where I was like, I've done so many of this design, <laughs> I didn't know if it was any good anymore. And yeah, I did, I pursued this one and I'm so pleased because I hope you agree, I think it came out really nicely. And these bags are nice, they're fully lined, so they've got nice um, weight, but they're like a very simple sack shape. And as I say, they're just really easy to carry around with you. And they do fit sort of larger projects. Actually, I've got a different project in there, so I could show you that now, couldn't I? So what have I got in here? Another Christmassy thing. And I said to you last time I wasn't a gift knitter and I'm gift knitting. So this is a scarf that I'm knitting for my dad. So, oh, dad, I don't think you'll be watching this. I know that he does sometimes look at my um, YouTube channel. I've heard that he's like shown people <laughs> that my channel, he's a proud dad and likes to show off what I'm doing, but I doubt that he'd watch. However, we're probably about 15 minutes in. I don't think he's watching, but um, if he is, I've just totally spoiled it. But basically I'm knitting him a scarf and I think this is the Nutkin colorway. So the yarn is the Fiberco Cumbria Fingering. It's a beautiful warm orangey red and he has like, um, it's not navy, but it's like a nice dark blue North Face jacket that he always wears in the winter. And I thought this would go really nicely with that. So it's a very like classic look. I'm using the No Pearl wrap pattern from Pearl Soho as the kind of inspiration for this, but I've changed the pattern because I'm not doing it to a wrap. So I'll try and put details of what I've done. I how many stitches did I knit? So I've cast them more like around 60 stitches. I don't think it was, it wasn't 60. I know it wasn't because you have to, it was a different stitch count. But basically I've, another change that I've made is I'm doing um, like an I-cord sort of edge on each of them, which just gave a little bit more stability to, and a little bit more shape to the scarf. But I think it's going to be quite a nice, I think that'll be about the right size. And as I say, it's a no pearl, so you're, um, it's a free pattern, so I feel like I can say, I think you're knitting three and then slipping one with the yarn in front, and you just do that in various combination for the right side and the wrong side. And yeah, I think Fibre Company uh, Cumbria has a really nice stitch definition, so I think for something like this with the kind of rib texture, I think it's actually gonna look really nice when it's finished. Am I crazy? Because I cast this on with like 17 days to go till Christmas. I feel like, and I, I actually put this on Instagram as well, this classic knitter behaviour, because I, I think everybody does this. It's like, you suddenly have this light bulb idea and you're like, oh yeah, I can do that before Christmas. And then you're like knitting down to the wire. But I think after a really, really busy month with the shop, it probably will start quieting down once you get past the um, last shipping dates for Christmas. So I think in the UK, Royal Mail are recommending that I send Track 24 packages on the 19th. So I'm gonna keep the shop open and I'd love for you to keep shopping there. Um, that's how I pay my bills. So it's always nice when you place orders and I'll be carrying on shipping, but just generally once those kind of last shipping dates before Christmas um, pass, 
it sort of does quieten down so I'm thinking that I'll be able to tidy everything up for the end of the year and I'll have a few days just before Christmas where I'll be able to really crack on with that scarf and get that done because I think my dad will really like that and he'll appreciate that I've made it for him so yeah I'm doing working on that um another project that I've got is in here what have we got oh this isn't a project this is something I was going to chat to you about for Christmas so I've probably mentioned this before but I'm sure it started with Danny of Little Bobbins and it's that she does Christmas Eve cast on and it's a tradition that I've started along with so many knitters I know so many people do the Christmas Eve cast on and it is what it sounds like you cast on on Christmas Eve and Danny started with socks I think her tradition her family was that she used to cast on a pair of socks and they play a board game which is so nice here it's like that's my time when all the preparations are done for Christmas Day, everything's wrapped, everything's done and I can sit down at the end of the day and I pull out my knitting and I cast on a pair of socks and if I'm lucky I'll have a nice glass of mulled wine or a hot chocolate, I'll have something special but it's like that signal of yep the Christmas break started and in here I have got a ball of yarn that I bought especially for this because obviously the kits that I'm selling in the shop for the homebody socks that was my intention that they'd be Christmas cast on boxes so I would love it if you wanted to have a look at these but I've already knit a pair of those <laughs> so I'm going to do something different and Olivia who designed the pattern she was working on West Yorkshire spinners for ply in the Hollyberry colourway so instead of doing her homebody socks I'm going to do these which are also inspired by Olivia and it's going to knit up in this lovely um, sort of Christmassy colourway I'm going to put it with this um, yarn uh, this is a oh what is it called I've used it so many times I think I talk about it in every single episode. Cascade, <laughs> Cascade uh, Heritage Solids, and this is in a navy, and I think that'll be like a very classy winter sock. So that's my plan for Christmas Eve. And another plan for knitting is I've got some yarn from Wool of the Andes, and this is a really nice, um, it's very cool toned brown and I think it's going to be a great neutral. And I'm actually going to knit the Andrea Maori Weekender. So I think I might do my weekend a slightly different because I'm not mad on reverse stockinette, which is what you um, do the body in. So I think I'm just going to switch up the pattern and do the body in stockinette. I've just realised as I'm talking, I started this out by saying, I don't usually modify too much. Like this was quite an unusual thing for me. And then I'm talking about modifying this. And <laughs> I was also talking about the um, Sophie scarf. I'm modifying that to use up all the yarn. So maybe I do, maybe I do change things up more than I realise. But um, yeah, I'm going to do the weekend a sweater. And I think this will be a really nice, um, yeah, a really nice classic kind of colourway to wear with jeans and yeah, I just know that it'll be something that I'll reach for loads. I have a brown sweater with colourwork yoke and I wear that all the time so I think that will be a really good, uh, yeah, really good sweater to have in my wardrobe and I've seen it on so many different people and it looks good on everybody. I don't think I've seen anybody that The Weekender doesn't look good on so... Uh, yeah let me know if you've knit a weekender what you're working on are you madly working away on Christmas gifts as you're watching this I expect you are I've been watching loads of people on YouTube how I've been um, sort of doing all my sewing and everything I kind of have my laptop on in the background as I'm packing up orders and doing all kind of things and I've seen a lot of people talking about the gift knits that they've been working on so yeah I'd love to hear what you're working on while you're watching if you haven't subscribed yet subscribe to the channel and give the video a thumbs up it really helps YouTube um, know what you like so if you give it a thumbs up they'll probably show you more of my videos and they'll be showing you more videos of a similar style so you'll get to meet lots of new um, knitting podcasters and that's always great isn't it I know that I've seen there's so many people that are starting new channels all the time I feel like when I got into doing this a lot of the people that I really enjoyed watching they're not doing it so much now they may be infrequently uploading but um it seems to be a whole new wave of people that are coming out um, and giving it a go so I love that and I hope you still enjoy what I'm sharing <laughs> here I feel like all I do is I pop in and I share with you what I'm wearing and I just hope that you like it because yeah I don't put too much um, like I'm not making projects to show you on here <laughs> I just come on to share what I'm actually working on so often you'll see me knit the same things and 
I have quite a similar sort of colour palette that I use. So yeah, I really hope you like what I'm doing. Thank you for being here. And yeah, I probably won't speak to you now until 2023. That sounds strange to say that, doesn't it? So have an amazing holiday season. If you're celebrating, have fun. And yeah, whatever you're doing, I hope that you get a little bit of a break from work. I know lots of people work all the way through over the holidays. And yeah, really grateful if you're keeping all the services going for those of us that do get to have a little bit of a break. And yeah, I just hope that whatever you're doing, you're somewhere where you're warm and you're knitting and yeah, just have a really, really nice end of December and I will see you in the new year. Thanks very much for watching and I will see you soon. Bye.